So today's video is all about accessories that you can pick up for the ROG Ally. And specifically, my goal here is to break down accessories that I already ordered, accessories that I actually already have that just worked great with the Ally, and then some accessories that I'm considering picking up but holding off on for now. Now, the reason I say there are some that I'm holding off on is because even though I'm highlighting a range of accessories here, I don't wholeheartedly endorse every single one of these, but yeah, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, we'll get to those in time. But for now, let's go ahead and start off with an accessory that I did order and actually is tremendous and works really, really well with the Ally, and that is the charger dock. So for $64.99, you get what looks like a slightly larger AC adapter that has a USB-C port that you connect to the Ally, a USB 2.0 port for a controller, or I mean, really, I guess any other input device that you want, and finally an HDMI 2.0 port and that's about it. Also included is a nice six foot braided USB-C cable, which I thought was a really nice inclusion, especially because they did include a really nice rubberized cable tie to sort of shorten the length of that cable if you need to. And the build quality on the charger dock feels really solid with prongs that go ahead and fold down into it so you can make it even more compact for the purposes of travel. Now I think the obvious comparison here, or at least for me the obvious comparison, would be to pit it against the Steam Deck's official dock. Now that's $89 and it has a whole lot more connectivity. You've got an HDMI, you've got a display port, you've got three USB 2.0 ports, and also an Ethernet port and the thing functions as a stand as well. But again, that all comes in at a price that's about $25 higher than what you would end up paying for the Allies charger dock. Now, here's the thing, even though it has the demonstrable edge in almost every category in terms of connectivity, there is one area where I think the charger dock on the Ally is actually a little bit better, especially for my purposes, than what I got from the official Steam Deck dock, and that it, it is more compact, and then on top of that, it doesn't have a lot of stuff that I don't really need. I'm not saying it's not helpful to have increased connectivity for your device, especially considering this is a full-blown PC and all, I'm just saying the fact that it does have everything that I need just in one discrete charger block is actually pretty handy, and I imagine it would be especially handy if you're somebody who really wants the ability to put your ally in the dock mode and you're somebody who travels a lot, you know, you're in and out of hotel rooms, this form factor might be preferable to hauling around a much larger, more conventional dock. And something else I really like about the official charger dock is that it did include like this six, seven foot braided USB-C cable because there are situations where I do want to continue to hold onto the device while it's still docked up. And, you know, maybe I just want to go ahead and use the controls that are natively on the device instead of using an external controller. But it is kind of nice that you have the option here. Whereas with the Steam Deck dock, you really just have a very short USB-C cable that's integrated into it, and that's about it, unless you want to get an extension cable for it. And I have to say, so far it's performed exactly the way that I would want it to. As soon as I hooked it up to an HDMI cable, it just immediately put the game on the display without any fuss. I had no Windows weirdness to deal with. I didn't have any weird resolution problems. It just worked, and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. I did not have quite such a smooth experience when it came to the Steam Deck dock early on, though later on it seemed to perform better for me. But yeah, overall I would say that it's a really solid value, and I think it's worth picking up if you get an ally and you have any aspirations to play it like on your living room TV. And again, given that form factor, I think it's particularly well suited if you do a lot of traveling around with your ally. And on the subject of travel and taking your ally on the go, this next accessory is fine, but I don't wholeheartedly recommend it just because I think it's just kind of okay, and that would be the official travel case that they released for the ally. It's not bad, but it's not exceptional, it's just sort of okay. At the very least, it's made of a water repellent PU cover, which, according to the description, should keep the Ally and any accessories stored inside dry and safe, but honestly, there's just really not a whole lot of room in this thing for additional accessories, aside from one flap that also doubles as a stand, where you could drop in a couple of SD cards. I suppose you could go ahead and cram a USB-C cable in there as well if you wanted to, but you're not really going to have space for a charger or the charger dock that I've already mentioned, so it is kind of just the bare minimum if you just want to have some sort of protection for the Ally and then you want to throw it into a larger case, like a backpack or a bag or something like that. And I guess it's kind of neat that it has that sort of Velcro flap stand so you can go ahead and prop it up if you want to play with a controller or maybe watch a video or something on it, but honestly I don't see myself ever really watching videos on the Ally because I would rather use my phone for that and preserve as much precious battery power as I can on the Ally given that it chews through battery so quickly. Again, this is not a terrible case, and the design is all right, I guess, but for 40 bucks, I think I was just expecting a little bit more, especially considering the case that came with the Steam Deck kind of had a place on the back, at least, where you could kind of put the power adapter and have it, you know, sort of travel with you. So, yeah, for 40 bucks, I don't know if I'm going to hold on to this. I may end up returning it and get something a little fancier, like, you know, like a Waterfield design case. Granted, those are a lot more expensive, but they're also more stylish. They've got better build quality and definitely more space to hold stuff if you go for something like the City Slicker case. And finally, the last major accessory that I made a special effort to order for the Ally is not a first party offering, rather it's just a really good external battery, and that is the Anker Power Core 737 revised version. At least I think it's the revised version, because I have an Anker Power Core that was also designated 737, but it did not include a gorgeous display like this one does to let you know exactly how much power each of your devices is drawing. 
And aside from having a gorgeous display to let you know how much juice your accessories are pulling down, it crucially delivers 140 watts of power, which also has no problems triggering the 30 watt turbo power delivery mode for the Ally. And naturally, this will make sure that you get the best looking graphics you can on the device. Again, assuming you're not gonna absolutely splurge for that $1,500 external GPU that they have on offer, which, I mean, I guess it's pretty cool, but probably not something that I would go for. Also, true to the rest of Anker's other products, the build quality is just stellar on this thing, and as a 24,000 milliamp hour battery, it can keep your ally going full speed ahead for about double the normal playtime, and recharge a phone about five times over if you need to do that as well. And again, I just think that display is a really nice touch, and one of the standout features that kind of sets it apart from other batteries that you might use with the ally. And in addition to the battery itself, it also comes with like a little carry pouch, and also a USB-C to USB-C cable that's rated for 140 watts of power delivery. Although I think I saw some videos online that actually tested this and found it could even go to like 200 or something like that, which might get kind of warm at that point, but yeah, nonetheless, it's an extremely good battery and I've been having a lot of fun with it, specifically using it to play the Ally on my couch for extended play sessions. Okay, so those were the accessories that I ordered specifically for the Ally, but these next ones are ones that I kind of already had laying around and they also worked great. And the first one is this cheap little Amazon stand that I bought for like $8. It's affiliate linked below and has been, I think, for just tons of videos ever since I first started using it with the Steam Deck. Now, it fit the Steam Deck reasonably well, although the angle was a little bit further back uh, for filming, which is kind of a problem for me, although not bad for gameplay. Although I will say if you use the exact same stand that I've been using for so long with the Steam Deck, it works a lot better, I think, for the Ally and keeps it a little bit more upright. Again, for my purposes for streaming and as long as you're kind of level with it, also a pretty good stand for playing, I would say too. And again, eight bucks, nothing fancy. It's got like, you know, like a rubber foot to keep from slipping around too much on your desk. And it's been particularly good for dock mode. So kind of a nice pairing with the official charger dock anyways. And speaking of dock mode, this next accessory is one that I actually bought whenever I was rebuilding the gaming rig back here, but it actually has been great at pulling double duty for both that and the Ally, and that is the Razer Orochi V2 mouse. It's small, it's lightweight, it runs for months off of a single AA battery, but the thing that I really like about it is that it actually has both Bluetooth connectivity and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle included. So the way I've used this so far is leaving the dongle plugged into my main gaming rig, and then whenever I want to use a mouse with the Ally, which does make navigating Windows a whole lot easier, I just flip it into Bluetooth mode and make sure it remains paired with the Ally, and I just really like this mouse. It doesn't have a ton of buttons or anything, so if you're somebody who's looking to do a lot of like mouse and keyboard gaming, it might not be the perfect mouse for you. But if you're looking for a smaller, more lightweight travel sort of mouse to go with the Ally, I think it's a really good candidate. Plus with that white and black, it kind of matches the aesthetic of the Ally anyways. Now this mouse is a little bit pricey. I think it normally retails for about $69.99. However, I would probably not purchase it at $69.99. You might want to wait for a sale because it seems like this mouse does go on sale fairly often. When I got it, I think I got it for like 40 bucks on Amazon. But yeah, all in all, I just think it's a really solid mouse, good build quality, nice aesthetic, and I still haven't had to change the battery yet. I've been using it for about three months at this point, I want to say. So yeah, if you're in the market for a fairly high quality mouse, I think Razer's Orochi is actually a pretty good option. And while I don't use that mouse very much for conventional gameplay, what I do use a lot for conventional gameplay is another accessory that I already had, and that is the 8 Do Ultimate Wireless Controller. Now I'm not going to do like a full breakdown of everything that it does, because I already did a review on this controller a couple months back, you can check that out somewhere up here I'm sure, but long story short, it is just an excellent well-performing controller. As soon as I plugged it into the dock to go ahead and get it connected to the Ally, it worked like a champ, and I've had no complaints with this controller so far. And in a way, I think it might even be a little better suited for the Ally than the Steam Deck. And the only reason I say that is because the utility you need to configure the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Controller, that is like, you know, adjust your dead zones, or, you know, change trigger sensitivity, or adjust macros, or, uh, you know, map the rear paddles, all that functionality is done through a utility that is Windows-based. So the fact that Ally does run on Windows means it's pretty easy to go ahead and jump in there and remap your controller as you need to. But yeah, the short story on this controller is it has a ton of flexibility, it's got the rear paddles that you can use, and it comes bundled with the most Tron-looking wireless charger that I've ever seen, 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that's sort of built into that base if you want to be, or you can extend it with the included cable. It's just a really good controller, and I think it's a solid value at $49.99. Now you can splurge and spend an extra 20 bucks if you want to get one that's also, I believe, Bluetooth capable and it has Hall Effect joysticks, but personally speaking, I don't regret buying the cheaper model at all, and it has continued to serve me well, both on the Steam Deck, on my gaming rig, and now on the ROG Ally. All right, so at this point, I've already gone over the accessories that I made a special effort to get for the Ally, a few that I had laying around that just happened to work really well with the Ally. But now let's talk about a couple that I'm considering, but not 100% sold on just yet. And the first would be one of those UHS-2 rated micro SD cards. Now the Ally's micro SD card slot does support UHS-2 speeds, which will put you up in the 300 megabytes per second range, which is significantly faster than what you might get, again, from the cards that you would see in like your Nintendo Switch or maybe on the Steam Deck, which I think more commonly top out around 100 megabytes per second. The only thing is they're also significantly more expensive. 
For example, if you want to buy a regular micro SD card that's about one terabyte in size, you can find them for $100 or even less if you shop around on the sales. However, if you wanted to get a UHS-2 rated 256 gig card, that's about 170 bucks right now, and honestly, there's just not a lot of people making them just yet. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the idea of expanding the Ally storage even further with something that's easy to use, like an SD card, but the other problem that I'm having right now is that the SD card reader on the Ally has not been super reliable for me. Now, this just happened to me over the past couple of days, but initially I was using a one terabyte card, and for reasons unknown to me, it just stopped working out of nowhere. Now, because I do work with Windows every day, I tried a few things that I knew of to try to get it to be recognized once more. I kind of got out of you know, the Ally software itself, and I started digging around in Windows, specifically going into Device Manager to uninstall it and reinstall it. I tried updating the driver, I tried disabling it entirely and then re-enabling it, and nothing I did allowed it to work again. Now, what's weird is it did not completely roast the card, although some people in the Discord and I think some other videos on YouTube uh, have also pointed out that the card can become inoperable. That doesn't give me a lot of confidence in the, uh, the SD card reader on this device, to put it bluntly. So, no, I'm not going to be considering jumping into the UHS-2 side of the SD pool, at least until, one, they come down in price a little bit, and two, I'm confident that the Allies become a little bit more reliable in its ability to read and hopefully not roast any SD card that I might put into it, especially if I drop 180 bucks on a card for just 256 gigs of storage, because, yeah, I definitely don't want that to happen. And finally, the last accessory that I'm kind of considering for the Ally is ordering a skin wrap for it. The problem is we don't have a lot of them available yet. I think I only found like one or two sites that actually provide these, but I'm also a little hesitant to go ahead and put a wrap on it just yet, just because even though I like the aesthetics and it's fun to kind of customize your device and give it a different look, the system gets super hot. Like the screen gets really hot, the rear is not quite as bad, but those vents at the top definitely spew out a ton of heat. Not quite burn yourself heat, but it's toasty, and I'm wondering if that might actually, you know, cause some issues in terms of uh, how well the system's able to cool itself, or if the wrap itself might have trouble staying adhered to it if it just gets really hot and just might start to peel away. So I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet, but it's way less risky, I would say, than probably messing with the SD card reader right now. But yeah, those are just a couple of accessories that I'm thinking about, but again, just, just not quite ready for it just yet. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you some insight into some accessories that would be a good choice for your ally and maybe some to avoid for right now. I will go ahead and drop affiliate links below if you want to explore any of those. But yeah, what about you? Have you picked up any accessories for the ally so far? Are there any that you're considering? Also, if you've had any issues with that SD card reader, I would love to hear about it. I know at least a few of you did comment and let me know that you also had some problems with this. So yeah, if you have any further insights, I would love to hear about it. But yeah, as always, thanks for taking the time to watch videos here. It really means a lot to me. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.